Our last big unit uh, first semester was differential equations, and we talked about different techniques to solve it, including separation of variables, using y equals bx when you can't uh, separate it the normal way. We looked at approximation methods, which includes slope fields and Euler's method, and then we had uh, different application kind of problems like Newton's law of cooling and logistic equations. So first I want to just talk about how to solve equations in general, uh, review how to find the general solution and the particular solution. So here I have the rate of change of y with respect to x is jointly proportional to x squared and y minus 3. The constant of proportionality is going to equal 2, and we're going to find the general solution and then a particular solution. So the rate of change of y with respect to x means dy dx is jointly proportional to x squared and y minus 3, and that basically means as they both increase, then my slope increases as well. The constant of proportionality is k, so k x squared and y minus 3. Now in this specific example, I said that the constant of proportionality was equal to 2, so we're going to put in 2 for k. So there's my differential equation, and we're going to basically separate it and then integrate both sides. So I want to get all the y terms on one side so that it's something times dy. So in this case, dy over y minus 3 equals something times dx, 2x squared dx, and then integrate both sides. So the left side integrates to the natural log of the absolute value of y minus 3 equals 2 thirds x2 plus and remember, we solve for y in these types of equations. So the first thing we're going to do is take e to both sides. And consequently, you get absolute value of y minus 3 equals a e to the 2 thirds x cubed. So y minus 3 equals plus or minus a e to the 2 thirds x cubed. And y equals 3 plus or minus a e to the 2 thirds x cubed. So that is my general solution. Now, if I give you a specific point, that's where we're interested in a particular solution. So the plus or minus we can ignore because there's only going to be one possible solution out of this. What you can do then is just write for yourself y equals 3 plus ae to the 2 thirds x cubed, and then use your initial condition to solve for a. So negative 7 substituted in for y, uh, negative 1 substituted for x, so you get negative 2 thirds. So negative 10 equals a e to the negative two thirds and that means that a equals negative 10 e to the negative two thirds. So my final equation is going to be y equals 3 minus 10 e to or sorry positive two thirds to the two thirds e to the two thirds x cubed or y equals 3 minus 10 e to the two-thirds plus two-thirds x. And you can always double check to make sure your initial condition is satisfied. So if I substitute in x equals negative 1, uh, the x one is going to be 0 here, and 3 minus 10 is negative 7. Now, we talked about solutions where we couldn't separate the variables. These are the homogeneous solutions. So what we did was first we multiplied it out so that we didn't have a fraction to deal with. And then everywhere there was a y, we replaced it with a vx. And everywhere there was a dx, dy, we replaced it with a vdx plus xdz. So this becomes x times vx, vdx plus xdv equals x squared dx minus 5 v squared x squared dx. And if you do that and uh, distribute it out, x squared v squared dx plus x cubed v dv equals x squared dx minus 5 v squared x squared dx. You should have two terms, at least two terms that combine together. So here I have an x squared v squared dx and a v squared x squared dx that I can put together. So I'm going to move all my dx terms to the right hand side x cubed v dv equals x squared dx minus 6 v squared x squared dx and then do any factoring that I can. So on the right hand side I'm going to factor out an x squared dx 1 minus 6 v squared 
And then you should be able to separate your equation in terms of v's and x's. So the result of this is going to be v dv over 1 minus 6v squared equals dx over x. Integrate both sides. So if I use u substitution on the left, um, the integral is going to be negative 1 twelfth natural log of the absolute value of 1 minus 6v squared equals the natural log of absolute value of x plus c. And then we replace the v with y over x. So the final answer is negative 1 twelfth natural log of 1 minus 6y squared over x squared equals the natural log of the absolute value of x plus c. So that was solving it in different ways. Um, the approximations, basically we looked at slope fields where you drew a small tangent line at every point, and that gave you a visual idea of what the solution looked like, but we had no equation. Euler's was an algebraic way to find an approximation to the solution at a specific point, but we didn't have the entire function instead. So now I want to take that example that I just did, except I want to use Euler's with it instead. Um, you have to have an initial condition. So in this case, I'm saying that y of 1 equals 2. And I want to approximate y at x equals 1.2 by using a step size of 0 0.1. And this came from using the idea of tangent line. So at 1 comma 2, I'm going to substitute that in to find out what dy dx equals. So that would equal 1 minus 5 times 4 all over 2, which is negative 19 over 2. And then with a point and a slope, to write your first tangent line. So y minus 2 equals negative 19 has x minus 1. And then you use your step size to find the next point using this tangent line, and then a new slope, and then calculating a second tangent line. So my step size is 0 0.1, so the next x value I'm going to use is 1.1. Substitute that into my tangent line here solve for y, and we get y equals 1.05. So using these two new x and y values, I'm going to find a new slope. So dy dx is going to equal 1.1 squared minus 5 times 1.05 squared all over 1.1 times 1.05, and that simplifies to negative 3.725. So my second tangent line is going to be y minus 1.05 equals negative 3.725 x minus 1.1. And so now I'll use the second tangent line and then find a value at x equals 1.2. So at x equals 1.2, y minus 1.05 equals negative 3.725, 1.2 minus 1.1. Solve for y, and you get y equals 0.677. So that was Euler's method. Okay, time for our application kind of problem. Newton's law of cooling, I'm going to start with that one. So Newton's law of cooling was t minus t sub a equals t initial minus t sub a e to the kt where T sub A was your ambient or room temperature, T sub I was your initial temperature, T was the current temperature at time uh, lowercase t. I have here the current temperature of the object is 20 degrees. Five minutes ago it was 30 degrees, and 15 minutes ago it was 70 degrees. So if I use this piece of information and this one and this one, I can set up the following equation. I could say that 20 minus T sub A equals 30 minus t sub a e to the 5k. And then if I use the second piece of information, I can write that 20 minus t sub a equals 70 minus t sub a e to the 15k. So solving for e in both of these equations, I get e to the 5k equals 20 minus t sub a over 30 minus t sub a. This one here I get e to the 15k equals 20 minus t sub a over 70 minus t sub a. However, e to the 15k is the same as e to the 5k to the third power. So I can rewrite an equation in terms of t's. 20 minus t sub a over 70 minus t sub a 
equal to quantity 20 minus T sub A over 30 minus T sub A, all of that cube. And if you solve that, you get T sub A equals 2.192. And then substitute it into one of your equations, and you get K equals negative 0.351. And finally, we had our logistics equations. So this one, remember, the slope is 0 when y equals 5 and y equals 1. Um, k is positive, so it's actually an increasing logistic curve. And I have an initial value here also. So to separate the variables, we're going to write dy over 5 minus y, y minus 1 equals dt. Integrate both sides. So on the right-hand side, we're going to get t plus our constant. And then on the left side, this is where we use our partial fraction decomposition. So basically, I want to break it down into a over 5 minus 1, 5 minus y, times b over y minus 1. But I need to make sure that if I combine these two fractions, if I add them together, I get my original fraction back, 1 over 5 minus y times y minus 1. So basically, if I get a common denominator between these two fractions, We'll have a times y minus 1 plus b times 5 minus y all over 5 minus y, y minus 1, and that has to equal 1 over 5 minus y and y minus 1. So looking at just the numerators, that means that a times y minus 1 plus b times 5 minus y has to equal 1. And what we did to solve for a and b was to substitute in values of y. So if y equals 1, that means b ha times 4 has to equal 1, so b equals 1 fourth. And if you substitute in y equals 5, you end up getting a equals 1 fourth as well. So this equation becomes t plus c equals the integral of 1 fourth over 5 minus y plus 1 fourth over y minus 1 dy. Now we can integrate it, so you get t plus c equals negative one-fourth, the natural log of 5 minus y, plus one-fourth times the natural log of 1 minus 1. So then we started to solve for y. First thing we did was multiply both sides by 4, so 4t four plus c equals the negative natural log of 5 minus y, plus the natural log of y minus 1. Combine your log terms. So that becomes natural log of y minus 1 over 5 minus y. Use e on both sides. So y minus 1 over 5 minus y equals ae to the 4t. Multiply 5 minus y to the right-hand side. y minus 1 equals 5ae to the 4t minus yae to the 4t. So now if I add the negative yae to the 4t to the left side, and factor, you get y equals 5ae to the 4t plus 1 all over 1 plus ae to the 4t. But I have an initial condition. I said way at the beginning that y of 0 equals 1.5. So we're going to use that to solve for what a is. So that means that 3 halves equals 5a plus 1 all over 1 plus a. 3 plus 3a equals 10a plus 2. Uh, 3 plus 3a equals 10a plus 2. So you get 7a equals 1. So a equals 1 7. So my final answer is y equals 5 7 e to the 4t plus 1 all over 1 plus 1 7 e to the 14.